for me, the term winter sowing used to mean that, okay, it's time to put the winter wheat in the ground. It's time to sow the red clover. But I never thought about winter sowing for the future plants of the spring. A new thing today. And Marla is an expert gardener. And I know that she's resourceful and she's looked into winter sowing for the future of our flower gardens and our vegetable gardens in the spring. <laughs> I know you've tackled this, Marlon. It's really not a hard thing to do, is it? No, and that is why, that is one of the reasons why we do winter sow, because it's very easy, it's very inexpensive. Um, you can start doing this in January, planting your seeds. Um, it's motivating because a lot of people suffer from the wintertime blues. Yeah. And it's something that a gardener can do during the winter and it's fun and it's exciting to watch those little seedlings sprout. And it's a great time to plant perennials to start out with because perennials, there are a lot of perennials that need a long, cold, wet winter and exactly right for winter stratification cold stratification they need that time period so right. it's a great time to start a lot of your plants for the future of your garden but, okay well let's move then right. to our choice of containers okay so basically you've got different choices here um, my preference is a milk jug which most everybody has either a milk jug uh, that they bought buy from the store your milk jug, a water jug, uh, iced tea jug, as long as it's clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a mini greenhouse out of a milk jug. Yeah. So what you would normally do is I like to cut mine right at the edge, make a small slit in it, and then take it and cut it directly around. But you want to leave a little bit of a handle because oh. you're going to need to open that container. Right. And especially when the temperatures warm up, it's going to need the the fresh air and the wind, okay. the breeze. So now, did you purposefully make it where exactly the hinge right. is where the handle is? Exactly right. So you can open it and, and you're making stronger. a little mini greenhouse. As long as it's clear and preferably plastic uh -huh. and um, you can make drainage holes in the bottom. Exactly. See, like, I brought my little thing because I want to sew something with you. Okay. This was a tomato case. And you can practice and with you that see, one. And you see, all I have to do is already got ventilation in the top mm -hmm. so that the moisture can go through that. But all I'll have to do then is just put me some holes and you can take a soldering gun or a screwdriver or whatever. Right. And make, you have to have drainage. You have to have drainage. Okay. Well which then. brings us to this process. Okay. In order to make your drainage holes for the bottom, um, before I had a little wood burning tool, now I use that because it's so much easier when you're going to uh, oh, that's do not a, a lot solder of, gun, is it? No, but you can use a solder gun. Gotcha. You can also use a hot glue gun. Yeah, okay. Um, something like that works perfect. Okay. Before I ever had those things, you don't have to go out and buy those kind of things if you don't have them. You can use something as simple as an ice pick and poke your holes, a bunch of holes in the bottom. Okay. We're going to talk about soil here. Um, when you start seeds, you want a very light soil. Um, so what you what you normally would use is a uh, potting soil, just a plain potting soil. You without don't, it, exactly without fertilizer, without um, moisture control. You don't want those things. You want a plain soil. Okay. And what I usually do is some of the soils, even potting soils that you get, are kind of heavy. And so I may amend mine with a, a little bit of perlite and also I'll add some peat moss or- You don't put vermiculite. You can in place of like, uh, in place of the perlite. Usually okay. vermiculite is okay. a, another thing that you can use. So a peat moss and perlite mixed in, make it a light, airy soil. Now, when you add your soil to your container, you want at least, a, I always normally do about three inches because you want to give it some room for those roots, roots to yeah. grow strong, healthy roots. Okay. I've selected some seeds for you, and I know you brought your own that I you did. like to do too. So we can do both of those. Okay. The ones I've selected for you is a perennial that's called Granny Bonnet's Columbine. Okay. And I know you're a grandmother. Okay. 
And so I thought that would be very appropriate thing for you to plant today. Okay. So this one is a cool one for Easter. If you have children too, I yeah. thought this one would be a fun one for them to grow. It's called Bunny, Bunny Tails Grass. Oh, and yes. It's an annual. Yes. And so being we've just talked about annuals, this is already late in the season for for our seed starting. So an annual would be perfect to start now. Okay, okay. that's right, mid-March, yes. Um, winter sowing is also f great project for kids. Yeah. Um, they love it. They love it as much as we do. Um, they love to get out there every day and check on the plants and peek in the milk jugs and see if things have sprouted. Yeah. And it's just, it's a fun thing to watch, okay. to watch their babies grow. Well, I'm interested in the seed sowing and, okay. and, and we've got a process okay. to show here. So let's get in some All seeds. All right, well, let's open the granny bonnet. Okay. And these were saved seeds from my garden. And these are very pretty, real pretty pink. Oh, yeah. And so some people have asked me, well, how many seeds would you put in a container? It depends on the size of the seeds to me. Um, if, they, if they're large seeds, I may do nine. I may do 12. So I'm going to plant these, the, the granny, granny bonnets. And Columbine doesn't need soil to be covered. It needs light to germinate. Mm -hmm. So I just sprinkled a handful of seeds, not a handful, but a little bit of seeds in here because they are small seeds. Like a Columbine seed. So what almost. I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sprinkle them kind of like in little rows. Yeah. Do you ever mix your tiny seeds with sand? Uh, I do not. It's a good way to kind of not get it all a clump of seeds. Uh -huh. You get some sand and some seed, and, and you can even put them in a salt checker. Oh, that's and do awesome. That. Yeah. A friend of mine had a seed planter that yeah. she uses that's, okay. that's amazing. And okay. That's all, right, all right, now we've got our seed okay. in there. Okay, we planted a few seeds. So we've got to mark them too. Yes. And that's important because you don't want it to disappear from the window. That's right. That's exactly okay, right. So, so that's why I quit using. A and sharpie. That, and that puts the seed in contact with the soil. That's right. You okay. want to tamp it down just a little bit. Okay. All right. And then our next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab one of these little markers and we're going to identify what the plant is. And I use a what's called a garden marker and it, it doesn't, doesn't fade. Okay. That's, that's so crucial. We're going to mark this. I don't trust my memory anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Granny and any bonnets? So uh, while you're writing that, do you put this on the inside or the outside? This one we're going to put on the inside. Okay. And so because when you write on the outside of the jug, just to be on the safe side, yes. the sun will fade it. This type of marker does not fade very okay. much, so we're but we're going to mark it in just a minute. Okay, so now we're going to close it up and do what? We, we're not going to close it yet because oh. we need to water it in place. Okay. So we're going to step over here, and if you don't have a sprayer and you do a lot of winter sowing, this is a fabulous tool to use. I have one, but I've never used it. Oh. Well, it can be, the the benefit is it can be turned upside down. Oh, I see. A lot of times when you have a sprayer, you yeah. can't turn it upside down because okay. it doesn't reach the bottom. So Give her a bite, I go drink. through and I make sure I, I'm going to saturate that soil very well. So the next thing you're going to do is I'm also going to identify what it is on the top of the milk jug. Some people use a, n a number system. Um, I just want to know what it is. Right. All right. And I also like to write the date, which today is the 16th. 316. The item okay. marker upon us. All right. And then what we're going to do is we are going to tape this up. And I've done this so many times, I know about how many pulls to do. Oh, I messed you up. I pulled Oh, it. no, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And oh, it helps to have the right thing. Okay, there we go. And so we're going to tape it up, and I usually just start it at the handle. And we'll turn it around so you can see around there, and look at that. That's to keep it from blowing away. Uh, that keeps it closed and the moisture in. It keeps it in. closed and the moisture in. Okay. Okay. So then we'll come over here. We're going to let that sit 
outside. I put mine out in the sun because I want them. Some people put them under a tree to keep them a little bit protected. Just so they don't blow away something. Yes, that's the main thing now, is to put them in a protected area, at least though okay. where they're getting sunshine. All right, now, okay. now they've grown. Is that the next process? Now they've grown. So I'm going to come over here. This plant is a hyssop. I have some anise hyssop growing over here in the garden that's got that's already this tall. So that's been two months. This has been two months since 113. Yeah. So you can always know when you're going to plant them. So this is a great time to do this because you can see the process right now of putting planting them out into nature. These are ready to plant into your garden. Now, when you plant them out, a lot of people do because they're so teeny. A lot of people do a hunk of seedlings method when That's they plant them and, about. Woo, until they get a little bit bigger. Yeah. So what you want to do, and and a lot of times their roots will already have grown very thick in here. Yeah. And so what we and do. And when you separate roots, that sometimes puts them in shock, doesn't it? It does. It does. So what I like to do is I will just take in order to let these just get a little bit bigger and to decide where I want to put them. Plus, I won't plant all these plants. So I want to give them a little more time to get a little bit bigger. So I will take my little spoon here and I will just get out a clump of seedlings, a hunk of seedlings, and I will put that right in the little pot. And these will grow. But you can take that directly to you the can. garden. Yes, and I will show you some plants that I planted directly in the okay. garden. Because well, we better hurry up. <laughs> and these, these will grow, um, and the, the, the strongest seedlings will survive. Yeah, and, and you can snip out. Exactly. You can snip out the ones you don't right. want. Okay. What I usually do is let them grow, and then I break them apart, put them in more pots, and then you've got plants to share with right. other people at your plant swaps or your friends. Well, I think we see the do. process. And, and the results, and now of course this, you've already got tomatoes Yes, in. this is what I wanted to talk to you about doing vegetables. You can start vegetables. There are certain one, things you wouldn't start, but I wouldn't start like squash or beans right. or anything that are gonna it's grow. Just, yeah. But my tomatoes, I wanna give a head start. Yeah. So you have to really keep an eye on them when you plant them. I planted this one in February, beginning of February. That's you can just wait a, a month. Then. Yes, just a month, and they've already sprouted. And that's the, been outside. It's been outside. So, Marla, this is what we were striving to achieve. This is the result of your winter sowing, and you pull them directly from their growing container and transplanted them into the ground. Yes, these hollyhocks have been growing in in the winter sown jugs for since beginning of January. Um, it's now March, they're ready to plant out. They've got at least exactly. two sets of leaves and they can tolerate the cold that we are having. And another thing that you can do to protect your seedlings once you've put them in the ground is take your winter sown jug, go ahead and cut that little handle off and then place it over your plant, your newly planted seedlings. These are some sweet peas that I planted uh, last week and I just used the other halves of the jugs and just cut them and put them over the bottom and the top of, uh, use the bottom and the top and put them over each side of the seedlings to protect them from the winter cold. You fill my mind so full of information <laughs> that um, I still have time to go home. You exactly, and that's do exactly this. right. Because we're expecting some more cold in the next few weeks and it's not, it's not springtime yet. So it's time to get your winter sowing done and Watch your babies grow. And I and, thank you, know, you for your advanced planning. Well, thank you. <laughs> Made it wonderful to come and, and spend time with you and get your knowledge. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm glad to have you. If you like gardening, you'll want to subscribe to this channel. We showcase gardeners, plants, and the joy that growing can bring. 